Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so briefly, I'm going to talk to you about <clears throat> the entire of this piece, Predators, Patience, and Problems. All right, Predators, Patience, and Problems, all right? So, Predator is a person or group that ruthlessly exploits another person or group, all right? So, that, for instance, that could be considered in the dating game how we maybe exploit or objectify people by their looks, what they have, what they're doing, things of that nature, right? But I've noticed that in this being a man, the predatorial in a sense when I've noticed some things in my experience. And some of the things that I've noticed is that um, frequency of rate and location is key in this in this predatorial thing. So because, I, for instance, <clears throat> The places where predators exist the most will be church, work, school, neighborhood. Why? Because you have a schedule. You're keeping up with that schedule. So with you keeping up with that schedule, I know where you're going to be. So work, church, school, neighborhood, those are great places for me to kind of hone down on where you're going to be. And that's why they love it. That's why guys with no game love to be in those spaces and in those places. Because I don't need game if I know where you're going to be. This is going to wear you down after a while. You'll grow a fondness. Like, oftentimes you'll run into those people who that are attracted to you and they'll bring up this little small talk, small talk that you don't want to have, they don't even really want to have, they just don't know what else to say or what to say specifically, so they bring up small talk. And they can find your likenesses and, and things that you like and things of that nature because they've been around you, they know where you're at, they can hear, they listen, they're paying attention, you know what I mean? Um, we, I, I don't know if it's scientifically proven, I just know I've heard all my life that a woman knows if she wants to sleep with a man or if she's physically attracted to a man within the first, what, 15 seconds or some shit like that? It's a short time. Either way, it's a short time. And, I mean, I think it's the same as, the same goes for guys, too. They can look at a woman and figure whether or not they would like to mate with them or have sex with them. You know what I mean? Or um, whether or not they're physically attracted. So, you have that. And oftentimes, we go through what I call the new student Benefit. Now, the new student benefit is a benefit of the doubt that the new student gets. You ever had a new student that comes to your school? And they do something. Well, they're okay. Maybe not. But they get the benefit of the doubt because they still got that new student smell on them. So it's something new. It's just something different. Much of the reason why a lot of guys cheat sometimes. But we'll get to that later. All right? Now, you also, you have that, the new student benefit, and then a the opposite of that, you have the person that you never thought about even being with, entertaining, looking at, none of that. Like, you wasn't looking at them twice at all. You have that person, too. Now, that person is the person that wears on you, that you become fond of, that you start to like. That's that type of person. That person is the person that you wasn't thinking, like I said, you wasn't thinking twice about this person, but... You began to like them. You started to like them. You saw things that you like them. You spent time with them. And it's, it's weird like that. That's, that also works for that best friendship too. But again, another topic. So, start with the church. Now, the church breeds that vulnerability. And the church, primarily the biggest religion out there, which is Christianity, is built on the black on the backs of black women. Black women have the strongest faith in this world. They will believe that ancient nigga is the shit as long as she believes it. And if she believes it, that's on her and that's her and you cannot tell her differently. Same thing for when black women believe in Jesus, you can't tell them differently because their power of belief is phenomenal. Now, they feed on the fact that black women have a strong belief system and they feed on and rely on the community that women have with each other, how they commune with each other, nurture each other, and come together and do things together in groups and drones, that's 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 the congregation right there. So they depend on that, the vulnerability also is usually people turn to Christianity, turn to Jesus when they are in a vulnerable space. I mean with most things, because you look for things when you're without ordinarily, um, instead of manifesting, but that's another again. Um you are, they're, they're preying on the vulnerability because when you're going through something troubling, where it be, whether it be um, financial or emotional or physical, whatever, they're preying on that. So they usually say, well, turn to Jesus. Jesus worked for me. Ultimately, all they got to tell you is to, to remain positive and do positive things. But again, so with that, you're already in a vulnerable space because you're in a space where vulnerability is bred and it's pushed and it's led. Um... And then once you're once you're into that belief system, once you're in Christianity, they believe that 
Christian, they believe that they need a Christian man. So they're looking for a Christian man within the church. So, hey, hi, there goes Predator. Predator's going to show up to the church, and he's going to be yeah, at choir rehearsal. He's going to be at uh, prayer meetings. He's going to be at Bible study. He's going to be at Sunday service. He's going to be at morning service. He's going to be at noonday service. He's going to, the, you know what I'm saying? The revival is doing that. And um, a lot of times, it's the guy that you see week after week after week after week, and you start to like him. Oh, you think that you need a godly man? That's a godly man. Oh, God showed me a sign. These niggas won't be there anyway. But um, same goes for the neighborhood. Because the same could be said about the neighborhood. When you're in the neighborhood and you see people often, or somebody lives in your building, or somebody lives next to you, somebody lives downstairs. A lot of our neighborhood boyfriends and girlfriends were in our, well, <laughs> self-explanatory, right? Because you didn't see anything else. Like, you like vanilla because you never saw chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Same thing for that. Um... It also comes from an insecure approach with guys in the neighborhood, like um, black men in our hoods, in our, in our neighborhoods in the hood, primarily, um, we talk at women, we don't speak to them. So we'll say things out loud instead of actually sitting down and speak to women to approach a woman saying, hello, how are you, I would like to speak to you, and things of that nature, we don't do that. What we'd like to do instead is say, yo ma, damn she look good, yo, she got a fat, yo she look good, and we'll do that, speak at them. Instead of speaking to them, because that allow that that leaves the room for the insecurity. You don't have to. You, there's no let down if I don't actually approach you. There's no rejection if I don't actually approach you. If I just talk out loud and at you and you respond, that's that that's that segue in. So I don't have to actually do anything. I don't need any game. And the only reason guys continue to do that is because don't come over here. The only reason that guys don't come over here. The only reason that guys continue to do that is because it works sometimes. <laughs> And for the like one out of 50 women that it works on, guys will continue to do that because that's a success rate for them. That's enough for them. And the letdown is too much. That's why like that rejection is where you breed these insecure men with it. So, fuck you, bitch, if they don't turn around and stop. That's why. That's that insecurity because, you know what I'm saying, they don't have any, they, they, they're not engaged. They feel let down. They feel put down. They feel rejected. Rejection is a harsh feeling for some people and they can't deal with it. Um, in addition to that, um, what else? Is it? Right. It's different between whether you're approaching a woman and if it's you and her versus it just being you around people, especially if there's men around, because guys like to do the things in the crowd. They like to yell those retorts out in a crowd because that's the that's the self that's the safety that's the safety net that's the safety blanket that's a comfort blanket where. Um, you know what I'm saying? People yell stuff out in the group. Things that they wouldn't do alone, they'll do in a group, like yelling things out, um, getting into fights and arguments because you ain't storm because you have an audience. Now you're more concerned about what other people are thinking versus what um, the person in front of you thinks or what you think. Absolutely. What you think. Absolutely. Um, another predatory instance would be what I call tricks and trades. Now, um, often you see somebody else's are provisions. We like provisions. Um, ordinarily, the, 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 the same... The, the way it goes traditionally is that the man is the provider, the man is the hunter, the man is the, you know, the provisionary. So if he's the one providing the provisions, then the women are looking for men. The women are looking for men that provide those things, right? So, um, like a lot of times you'll hear a woman talk about a guy, and they be like, they be like, oh girl, tell me about him, and they be like, bitch, this nigga got a good job. They'll start with the job. This nigga worked for him, like. Sure. So the very first thing, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times they're looking for those provisions, which is cool to an extent, right? Um, a provision should be looked at and admired as, oh, they can take care of themselves and fend for themselves, and the same should be seen from men to women. Um, so being that we look for those things on top of uh, what media pushes, pushes, which is rich men and men in the spotlight and celebrity and popularity, um, and this is the age of attention. Attention is more important than ever. So... Um, if if if, if, if women, when women are looking for those provisions, those things, they automatically look for men and money. That's why a lot of times in the hood and within the black and like the, within the black community period, we like to get flashy and, and buy expensive things and nice things because we really care about what other people think. We want them to see us with these things. And for men, a lot of times it's showing a woman, hey, look what I can get. So she's like, ooh, look what he can get. And then we got that trade off. This is like, oftentimes you see a younger woman with older guy. Older guy has a head of, has a head of, sorry, in the work career or the work field, and he probably has money or more money than the younger guy, right? So she's oftentimes too susceptible to dating an older guy because of that. So when she dates an older guy, the guy is insecure as well because he's dating a woman younger than him because a woman his age or older or within the same ranking wouldn't un uh, understand what he's lacking and a younger woman wouldn't because she sees so much of what he does have and not what he doesn't have.
You feel me? Um, but then that leads into tricks. It's almost like prostitution because it's the same thing. Because a woman will sleep with a man, be with a man for the provisions and what he has. Not necessarily what his gets, but what he has. And a trick uh, will provide those things. He'll give that money. And so with the trick and prostitution thing, a uh, trick pays the prostitute to have sex and ultimately pays her to leave. So she, and sometimes, like I've had um, instances and associates and friends that have dealt in the sex industry and escorts, to be more exact, and strippers, um, they'll tell me that you're selling a fantasy, you're selling an idea. So whatever he's looking for, you're providing in an actionary, in a behavioral sense, and, and acting it out and giving that to him, and he's getting what he wants at the end. You know what I'm saying? It, sometimes uh, it's uh, him, her calling him baby or being affectionate, things like that, things that he may not get from a woman his age because of what I said and aforementioned about the provisions and what he has. You know what I'm saying? And having a woman around his age and ranking, she's going to notice those things that he has a woman, woman. But in that symbiosis where it's a trick and a prostitute, they're both getting what they want and separating ways. But you're still infringing on your insecurity because you want to get the instant gratification and never a full gratification. Um. So, and that's the same in the neighborhood, same in the church, you know, the dope dealer, or you've been in high school and the older guys have dealt with the younger girls or the girls in your class or your grade. Um, that's You've also dealt with that with the... Um, yeah, you've dealt, with, you've dealt with that before. So, um, also we have, I mean, the same goes for guys as well. Um, see, you may have seen guys that are date older women because they have bread, or you see a guy dating a physically unattractive woman, because, an attractive guy dating a physically unattractive woman because of what she has and what she provides, or the, the long-running joke, which is a skinny guy that dates a fat girl. Um, oftentimes you'll see it in, in rural places or suburban places or places that have white people and black people. You'll, a lot of times you'll see a thin, fit, or decently looking uh, black guy, obese, fat, out of shape, or unattractive white woman because she's tricking. It's a joke, but it, most truth is said in jest, and it comes from a place of truth. Um, it's toxic and it's a double insecurity. Both people are fring, infringing on their insecurities almost like sometimes in an interracial relationship you see black guy that likes white women specifically and a white woman that likes black guys specifically and that's their thing and you'll notice in their behavior what they like or what they are attracted to and you'll notice in his behavior what they like and attracted to not in all cases but a lot of cases you will see that um they even have a meme about the haircut that white women get when they was like oh you can tell i have mixed kids because of the haircut um so a lot of times we'll give up our best self and we'll settle for that, based off of divisions, based off of divisions, a lot of times guys do it with objectifying women for a body part or their attractiveness or whatever, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, guys, like, there's a joke that I got, and it goes, um, how come you never tell me I'm pretty? Because like, I didn't see how fat your ass was, right? And that's a joke that speaks to the how we objectify and subject each other to our physical attractions or one physical attribute. So in that case, it would be the big butt, right? And a lot of times, guys um, will judge a woman on how attractive she is, especially in our community, because a lot of us are predisposed to having larger butts and being more muscular and curvy, and they'll be more attracted to that. And so now we end up where we are now, which is a lot of women buying it, and it's coming out unnatural, not even looking good. You know what I'm saying? So they'll buy a fake butt or get a fat transfer, and she looks trash. Don't move right, don't walk, not when you walk, not when you move, and I'm pretty sure not when you fuck. It looks weird. Um... But women will go out and buy that because they feel more attractive. They'll tell you that they're doing it for themselves, but if you're doing it for yourself, I'm pretty sure you can save thousands because if nobody saw you, nobody, you're in your crib, nobody sees these things, nobody sees this fake ass, nobody's going to see it, then why would you pay for it if nobody's ever going to see it? Nobody's ever going to witness it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that leads us to, again, settling for less. Like, on one hand, on one hand, you have the provisionary chasing the low-hanging fruit, those that would not know what Saturday is at or wouldn't um, look up to them or admire them because they like they see the lack and they see where the flaws are. But also you have, um, also in that instance with the low-hanging fruit, you don't have to try hard. Like a lot of times you'll see people in relationships, in relationships where they don't have to try hard. They don't push each other for shit. And you can't push somebody after you've already gone to a relationship because the way you come into a relationship is the way you leave it. So if I see, if I come into a relationship and I see somebody saying that they want to get money, I'm about my money, I'm an entrepreneur, but I don't see any action, I don't see them doing anything, then it's hard to believe them. Just like, for instance, in my situation, when I was in a relationship with a woman and she was telling me that she was going to get weight with the first year, she didn't get nothing. She didn't get any weight after five years. But her telling me was enough because I remember she did have weight and I believed her. But 
it never came true. But if had I seen that action, what you need to see is some type of try, some type of effort in the beginning in order for you to believe that. That's what I would say. But then a lot of times you see people stuck in these stagnant relationships. Like oftentimes you see two fat people in a relationship and neither one of them is going to push each other to go to the gym because they're not pushing themselves to go to the gym. A lot of times you see, um, what else other examples I have? Um, 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 a guy, uh, 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 again, a guy will get with an unattractive woman because she got bread and she adores me. She's not the attractive one in the relationship. I am. I'm the loved one. You ever heard that saying where um, uh, the, the, the grandmothers or the mothers that tell the daughter, um, never love the man more than he loves you? Kind of almost. I don't know. That kind of makes sense to me. But that leads to stagnancy because you'll be stuck in a relationship. You're stuck in a stagnant relationship where you're not pushing each other. And same thing like, so if a guy is overlooking the fact that she has uh, a, a weight problem. If he's not asking and identifying and seeing where she's going from there with the weight issue from thence before the relationship initial initializes, then you can't push her later. It's gonna be harder to push her later, in my opinion. Um, but we all have some insecurities that we do, and we and we need to acknowledge and acknowledging those insecurities. We can acknowledge our our flaws and and our perfections. We can acknowledge those and then attack decisively instead of just attacking from a place of without instead of attacking from a place of with or deserving so sometimes we feel like we won't get i mean like you even times with the division thing to go back the guys that recount the money girls y'all know what i'm talking about the guys that recount the money or i'm saying a lot of times i see guys buy things that they don't even like because your bitches like it so i see guys buy sneakers clothes jeans I'm like yo bro you don't even dress fit like that how do you bitches like it but they'll do that, you know what I'm saying? Because it'll attract them. And that's attracting a certain type of woman, an insecure woman. But again, that's for another story. But all in all, I just wanted you to be aware of these things. Um, the, the, the symbiosis of the relationship, the symbiosis in life of the predator. So, again, that's all of us. We're the predator and the prey. But you choose where you're lingering. And you can just find your, your balance in the middle. If you find your balance in the middle of where... You are what you want. Identify intentionally. Everything will be cool. But if you're operating from a place of lack and insecurity, you will not get to it. You will not. Um, also, in those symbiosis, you might come across the ooh, almost lost child. You might come across the um the build the bay syndrome. Now, the build the bay syndrome is oftentimes any of you out there are um, find yourself very helpful or call yourself a helpful person or a person that wants to build up other people. A lot of times those people end up in relationships where they're trying to constantly build up somebody and then you can't really build them up. You can't build that person to the person that you want to be. You might come across a, 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 some, you might cross some obstacles and be successful in it, like be it, oh, I want him to dress better. So some women actually buy them in wardrobes and things of that nature, which is cool, against that provisions thing. But if you did that for him and there was no effort on his end and he's not appreciative, he's not showing gratitude, that's not going to keep him, boo. That's not going to keep him in... Again, you're building somebody instead of building with someone. So I, in my case, I was on, like I mentioned, the weight thing. Uh, it was the veganism thing. Like I dated a young lady that has an infection, uh, an infection that claims to be incurable, but it is very definitely incurable. There are people that I know personally that have cured themselves, but it comes along with a vegan diet, an alkaline diet, and herbs, and detoxing. So if you're telling me that you're going to go vegan, don't tell me that just because I am. Don't tell me that you're going to do something just because you see that me doing it. That's, again, that predatorial thing. We often will be yes men and put our best foot forward in a relationship when we're starting a relationship with dating somebody because we want them to like us and we want to be a part of what they're doing. So a lot of times, not a lot of times, but I will come across women that lead off with the vegan conversation in my inbox and lead off, lead off the conversation with something about veganism in person. Um, either one, vice versa. Um... Either way, they'll lead off with that because they know that I like vegans as well. That's my lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, 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 it's a nasty thing. It's a nasty thing. But, lead, you know what I'm saying? We'll put our best foot forward. We'll act like we like those things. Or we'll talk about those things because we know that person likes them. Again, the church thing, the school thing, the work thing. Everybody got that work bay. You know that joke? Same thing. You know what I mean? Um, same thing for the side nigga. The side nigga has his insecurity too because he never has to try to commit to anything or complete anything or be, you know what I'm saying, or show that determination of, com of completion with a woman because he's he's reaping the benefits of where her boyfriend may lie. You know what I'm saying? So if her boyfriend gets her mad that day, she's showing extra attention to the side. Things of that nature. You know what I mean? Um, 
But yeah, I just wanted to touch on those few points. Um, yeah, man. But we all got some prayer in us. We all got some prayer in us. Just be intentional with all your desires, and I think that we can avoid a lot of these things. Um, these are from my experiences. Again, some of it's scientifically backed. I just wanted to give y'all from my perspective and my experience. Um, yeah. So, peace, y'all. Just be intentional. I love y'all. Uncle Jock. Peace.